Okay, welcome to another Orbiter 2010 video, and this video is going to be another installment in my Absolute Beginner Guide. This is a video series I'm putting together that has a special focus on people who are brand new to Orbiter. Now, in the last two videos in the Absolute Beginner Guide, we are, we've started learning how to use Transex, and we're going to continue with that for a while. Transex is a fairly complicated beast, so it's going to take a whole bunch of videos before you really have a good grasp on it. Now, typically, I recommend that you watch these videos in order, but at the very least, before you watch this video, make sure you've at least seen the last two videos where we talked about Transex because we need that knowledge in order to go forward. We can't uh, go through all the basics in every single video or we'll never accomplish anything. So if you haven't seen the last two videos on Transex, watch those first, then come back to this one. Now, in the last uh, video where we went to the moon, we went there using kind of that standard approach where you start off at Earth, bring up the aligned plane MFD, wait for the relative inclination to get, to get to its lowest number, then you get into orbit, align the plane, then go out to the moon. That's what you do when you use the transfer MFD, and that's what they do if you watch that DG to the moon tutorial, which is a great tutorial, by the way. I do recommend you watch that. I probably watched it 50 times when I was just getting started with the orbiter. But unfortunately, that method is actually quite inefficient. When you are in low Earth orbit at a 200 by 200 kilometer orbit, every one degree of plane change costs 136 meters per second. Let me uh, switch camera views here. And let me bring up this uh, sheet here so you can see it. Um, this is just a little calculator I made uh, a while back. I was talking to Dimitri and he taught me how to calculate the cost of a plane change, and I've had this ever since. But I just want to show some numbers here, and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Uh, if, you have a, if you're a quarter of a degree out of plane, then it's going to cost 34 meters per second. And again, if you're one degree out of plane, it's 136. And this is linear, you can tell uh, by looking at these numbers. So a two degree plane alignment would be 136 times two, and a three degree plane alignment would be 136 times three, and so on. Now, I believe in the video, I believe in the last video that we did, we were like nine degrees out of plane. And a nine degree plane alignment is very, very expensive in low Earth orbit. It costs 1,222 meters per second to align the plane down to zero from, from a nine degree relative inclination. Now these numbers may not mean anything to you at this point, uh, depending on how, how much time you've actually spent thinking about delta V and the, and the fuel. Uh, it's, a little easy, it's a little easy to just kind of think of, think of having like almost unlimited resources when you're using the standard delta glider, because the standard delta glider has such a ridiculously overpowered an overly efficient engine system that you can pretty much you can you can go anywhere in the solar system uh, without ever refueling. Um, that's kind of this might be one of the downsides of the default vessel and orbiter is that it, it kind of it's the the engines are so efficient that people that are just getting started with the orbiter will have no appreciation whatsoever for for fuel efficiency and cost. But let's think of it in relative terms. If it takes us, uh, and again, in the last video, you know, we spent something like 3,120 or 3,130 meters per second, somewhere in that range. That was the cost just to go to the moon, you know, to travel uh, basically 400,000 kilometers. So if we're spending 1,222 meters per second just to align our plane, and, and we're not even leaving low Earth orbit yet, that should tell you that, you know, that should sort of set off some alarm bells in your head and say, well, there's something very wrong with that. You know, we're spending one third of the cost to, uh, to align our plane and, and we haven't even left Earth yet. And we still have another 3,100 meters per second to burn just to get to the moon. So, like I said very early on in the Absolute Beginner Guide, in, in the Absolute Beginner Guide you should always think plane change equals expensive. Uh, in almost all cases, but especially when you're in when you're in low orbit around a body that has a lot of mass like Earth, then plane change is expensive. And anything that we can do to avoid plane change while in low Earth orbit is a good thing. Now, I made some slides to help kind of illustrate some points here, and let me bring these up. And let me just go 
full screen. So when we first take off and get into orbit around the Earth, we, so we sat there on Earth and we waited for, for our relative inclination to be as low as it would get. And whatever that number would be, again, it changes depending on the month and depending on the year. But I think we were like nine degrees out. I'll, again, I'll have to go back and look at that video to see, but it was something like that. So this is kind of what we have when we get up into orbit around the Earth. Uh, we're kind of looking at a sideways view here. If we were to try to go to the moon nine degrees out of plane with the, uh, with the moon, then this would kind of be our orbital path. You know, we're kind of coming out here and we're missing the moon by, you know, by, by a ton. We'll never get there because we're so far out of plane. When we do the plane change maneuver, this is basically what we're doing. Instead of having an orbital, uh, an orbital path around the Earth that's kind of like that, we take our orbital path and we bend it like that so that it matches the orbital path of the moon around the Earth. And now we can go out to the moon and everything is happy. But again, that's, in, that's inefficient. It's not a good way to... Um, it's perfectly fine to go to the moon that way, but, the, that, but that plane change maneuver is really expensive. A better method is this. Let's go to the next slide. We get up into orbit around the Earth, and, and we're saying this is where the moon is at right now. When we, when we actually get up into orbit, this is where the moon is at. But we are going to time our ejection from Earth so that by the time we get over here, the moon will have moved from wherever it's at, because remember the Earth, the moon orbits the Earth uh, in a 27.32 day cycle, and it also kind of goes up and down relative to Earth. So if we if we take off and get into orbit, and we don't really care what our plane alignment is with the moon, uh, it could be one degree, it could be 10 degrees, it could probably be 27, it doesn't really matter. But we're going to time it so that when we do our ejection burn from Earth or when we do our translunar injection burn, we're going to arrive at the orbital altitude when the moon gets to that position. Now, if our timing is wrong, we're going to have some problems because the moon will either be, it won't have made it to that position yet or it will be past it. So we need to, we need to, be, ver we need to be fairly accurate with our timing uh, to the best of our ability. So that's the idea of, a, of an off-plane transfer. Now let's talk about how to actually do it. Uh, it's not terribly difficult, so if you're worried that this is going to be over your head, uh, don't worry. If I can figure it out, I'm sure you can. I think probably the best thing to do for starters is to bring up a couple of different things we can do. But let's bring up, uh, well, we have Orbit MFD open on that side. and. Let's first take a note. Let's take note of what we're looking at in orbit MFD. Let's just as a reminder This would be the surface of the earth and this is the center of the earth and this is the uh, this is our position on the earth And we have no orbit. That's why the line looks like it does right now Once we're in orbit, we'll have that nice green circle completely around the edge, but just a quick reminder of what we're looking at Now let's target the moon and our view shifted uh, fairly dramatically because now the Earth is down here in the middle, and we can barely see it. And this is the moon's orbit around the Earth, and this is where the moon is at in its orbit around the Earth. Now, in order to kind of figure out what we need to figure out, we actually have to do something that we don't usually mess with too much, and that's the frame of reference. Up to this point, I don't think we've, I don't know if we've really had any videos where the frame of reference mattered in Orbit MFD, but in this case, it does matter. Uh, so make sure, like always, that projection is set to ship. I actually won't, I'm sorry, we want projection set to target. And we want the frame of reference to be set to um, uh, EQU. Now we can see that the, the moon is here. And this line here is called the line of nodes. And you'll notice if I press the FRM button to change the frame, the, the line of nodes changes. And that's why it's important for it to be set to EQU in this case. Uh, the, the frame of reference will cover in another video, but there's the ecliptic frame of reference and there's the equatorial frame of reference. We'll, we'll get to that another time. It's not important in this video. All you need to do is just make sure that the frame of reference is set to EQU. Now the line of nodes is, if we go back to our slides, it's this. The, the, let me try to think of how to explain this best. 
um, if we kind of go back to you know this slide here, we're missing the moon if we're you know if we went out if we're off plane if we're out of plane you know five degrees nine degrees whatever, and we try to go out to the moon this way and we don't time it right then we're going to miss the moon because the moon's not going to be in plane when we get there. So we need to arrive at the moon at that point or at that point. It doesn't matter which side we, we're at. Typically, you just want to go for whichever one's closer, though there are actually certain advantages to arriving at one node or the other, depending on the moon's periapsis and apoapsis, but that gets into some really fine detail and we won't, we won't worry about that. So for this video, we just we want to arrive at the moon here or here. And when we do that, what that means is that this will be the case. We will leave Earth when the moon is out here at some point, and we will arrive when the moon is crossing that line of nodes here. Now, how long, how long will it take the moon to go from that point to that point? That's the question, because if we, if we don't get the timing right, then we're going to have the case where the moon's going to only be halfway here, and we're going to have arrived at that point, but the moon's still way up here, or the moon will be past that point, and we'll be here. Either way, we'll be missing the moon. So we have to get the timing, we have to get the timing right. It takes 27.32 days for the moon to orbit the Earth one time. So we can kind of do some uh, basic math here and figure out how long it's going to, how long it'll take, the, uh, how long it'll take to get the moon to go from this point to that point, just by sort of dividing up the circle into into, into different points. Let me bring up a calculator here. So let's think, let's, let's kind of round it off to 28 days. And we're going to say, we're going to say, so we know, we know that it takes us about 3.5 days to get to the moon because uh, that's, that we just know that. And if we divide, if we divide 28, which is roughly how long it takes the moon to orbit the earth, we divide that by eight then we have 3.5, and, and why, did I, why did I divide by 8? Or let's just take it the other way around. Uh, we could take 3.5 times 8, and we have the 28 days that it takes us to get, it takes the moon to orbit the Earth one time. The, the 8 is what's important here, because we're basically, we're dividing the moon into 8 slices. You know, if we think, if we, if we divide here, then we would have 1 and 2, and if we divide it again, then we'd have 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then if we divide it, you know, four times, then we have the eight slices, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have eight slices here that are the moon. And we know that if we know that half of a circle is 180 degrees and half of a half is 90 and then half of a half of a half is 45 degrees, but we can even do that calculation. 360 degrees in a circle divided by eight equals 45 degrees. So what we're saying is that in the 3.5 days that it takes the, the moon to go from this point, uh, or rather, the 45 degrees that it that's, that, it, that would be for the, uh, the, you know, the division of 8 would be about 3.5 days. So my question originally was, how long is it going to take the moon to get from that point to that point? And the answer is we need to leave Earth when we are about 45 degrees away from that point. Okay, so we just take that point and we go backwards in time about 45 degrees and we say, okay, that's the time to go. Now, just to help illustrate this point, let me bring up the scenario editor and let's play with the date a little bit just to show good times and bad times to go. So right here, we're saying that we want to get to the moon and arrive at that node, but it's going to take us three and a half days to get there. But the moon is only a few hours away from this point. There's no way, uh, without using warp drive technology, we can get to the moon that fast. So that this is a bad time to go. But what about here? Well, now the moon's past this this point of the line of nodes. So if we if we left Earth now, 
and we got to that point, well, the moon would be way over here, so it's, it's, it's not in the right position. But you might think, well, what about here? Because that's about 45 degrees away from the line of nodes. Well, yes, but here in this, in this case, the problem is the moon is 45 degrees after the line of nodes, so we've missed our opportunity. That we would, in this case, we would have to go around to the next line of nodes. So we would have to bump the date forward to about, uh, maybe about here, maybe a little bit less than that. Oops, that's months. Let me do months. So about like that would be, you know, about 45 degrees, and that would give us the three and a half days that we need to get to the moon, and then the moon would travel that distance in the three and a half days. Let's reset the time to right now. Now, one thing that I keep saying, and I hope you're so slowly picking up on this, is that I'm saying about. I'm not saying definite. I'm saying about. The reason I'm saying about so much is because the moon, uh, the, the number 27.32 is how long it takes to go around the Earth one time. That's pretty well fixed. It doesn't change. But as you know, or as you, as you hopefully know, objects that are at periapsis travel faster than objects that are at their apoapsis. So the moon uh, is no different than, than a vessel. When it's reaching Earth's periapsis, it's speeding up. And then as it's going away from periapsis, it's slowing down until it gets all the way over to apoapsis, at which point it's going as slow as it ever gets then it starts speeding up again as it comes back around to periapsis. So what that means is that if, let's say we divide the moon into four quarters, and if we uh, take that figure of 28 days and we divide that by four, then we're saying that's seven days per quarter. But it doesn't work quite like that because in this, in, in this part of the orbit, the moon might be reaching periapsis, in which case it's speeding up, it's getting faster and faster, so it might only take six days, or it might only take 5.85 days to travel that quarter. But then as we get to the other side, and we're approaching apoapsis, it'll take longer than the seven days, that it might take uh, eight days, or it might take, you know, 7.5, or whatever the case. So the, the, the point is, you can't, the, the 45 degree figure that we're coming up with for that three and a half days isn't exactly fixed. So in some cases, um, you know, here, in fact, yeah, on this, on this side, in fact, where uh, the moon is approaching periapsis, you can see the periapsis number there, or the periapsis dot there. If I press mod, you can see periapsis there and apoapsis there. So 45 degrees from uh, here to here might not be enough in this case. We might actually need to leave a little bit sooner. Um, we don't have to worry too much about that. What we can do is just kind of eyeball it at 45 degrees and then take off, get into orbit, and we're going to get to the moon anyway. It's just it's a matter of just being efficient in some cases and less efficient in other cases. But if we, we kind of eyeball it here, and since we know we're approaching periapsis, I would say we would want to leave a little bit sooner than that 45 degree figure. And I don't know that we, yeah, we, this is more than 45 degrees. You can tell just by eyeballing it. We don't even have to like, you know, you don't have to put a protractor on the screen or anything. You can just tell by eyeballing it. If you draw a straight line, this, this line from right here to right here, and if you draw kind of a straight line straight down, you can kind of visualize where 90 degrees would be. This would be about 90 degrees right here. So 45 degrees would probably be closer to here. So at this point, we're probably... 65 degrees or so away from away from this point now we would like to probably be closer to the 45 degrees so let's just kind of warp time forward here a little bit and we're just going to eyeball it we'll go with something like that again because we we know we're approaching periapsis we know that the 45 degrees isn't going to be quite enough. We're going to want a little bit more time than that. So we're just going to take off a little bit early. But, but we're roughly in position now. The, or the moon is roughly where it needs to be with regards to the line of nodes. Again, if the moon was here, we would need to fast forward time. Or if it was out here, we would need to fast forward time until it was about 45 degrees from there. 
Now, once the moon is basically in the right position, the next thing you want to do is bring up a line plane MFD, target the moon, and now we need to decide the uh, time of day to leave. And right now we can see that this wouldn't be the best time of day at all because the relative inclination is very high. So we're going to go ahead and, and warp time forward. And this is also why I left this a little bit of a little bit early here. So we can warp time forward until the relative inclination is as low as it will get on this on this day. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, coming around now. And again, if you accidentally overshoot, you can just bring up the scenario editor and then back up, you know, by a few minutes. But it's something around here and we're getting close. Just waiting for that number to stop counting down, waiting also for the rate to switch over from negative to positive. And there we go. So that, that is as low as the relative inclination is going to get on this launch date. Now let's let's quickly look at that again in that uh, spreadsheet just so we can see. If we got into orbit and did a plane change, it would cost us a total of waiting for the spreadsheet to finish working. 1,282 meters per second. Uh, worth of delta v to do that plane change and that's just absolutely ridiculous we need to at this point in the absolute beginner guide we really need to start thinking about being better orbinauts than that so now is the time to take off and get into orbit and we would just simply fly at a 90 degree heading to do that and we're going to skip the ride to orbit again because it just takes an additional 11 or 12 minutes that we don't need to that we don't need to do so let's bring up the scenario editor edit and of course, for your own flights, you know, to, to be complete, I recommend getting up into orbit. But this is an exp explanation type of video, and we don't want to spend time unnecessarily. So we're going to go orbit, and 6571 puts us in a 200 by 200 orbit. Zero eccentricity, apply, done, done, close, raise the landing gear, switch the HUD over to orbit. Now, what we have just done, again, think about it, that we just took off from KSC, we got into orbit, our orbit's circular. And under, under, under other circumstances, what you would now do would be to fast forward time to the descending node and align your plane, then go to the moon. But we're not going to do that. We're going to do an off-plane transfer. Now, let's, uh, I always like to be in the prograde position. It just makes me feel better. So let me do that. Now let's bring up TransX on both sides. And I will explain things uh, in a lot of detail still, but again, I'm, 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 I'm assuming, I'm hoping, I'm, I'm assuming that you've already seen the previous two videos so I don't have to go into as much depth as I did before. So on this side, and actually in this case it doesn't matter which side, but we're going to target the moon on one side. Then we're going to go forward on this side, and we're going to view the encounter. Now on this side, we're going to set up the maneuver. So we're going to press VW to get it to the maneuver mode. And remember, when maneuver mode's off, none of these buttons do anything. So the only thing you can do is turn maneuver mode on. Now we're going to press VAR till we get over to the prograde velocity variable. And remember that we need to raise one side of our orbit in order to get out to the moon. And in order to do that, we need to put in some positive prograde. And we know that it's about 3150, so if we want, we can actually start just by typing in that number, 3150. And then we can do an adjustment down to, say, fine, and take away some of that velocity until it's closer to the orbital altitude of the moon. Now we need to work on our timing, because we can see if we were to do this maneuver right now, this very second, then it would send us out here. And by the time we got out to that point, the moon would be way over there. It would be about 90 degrees away from our current position. And that's no good. So we need to work on the timing of our burn. And we do that by the, the man date, maneuver date. And remember what I said in the other video that you don't want to think about this necessarily as a date such as days, months, and years. But this can also be thought of as maneuver time. And that's what we want to think of it. That's how we want to think of it in this case is maneuver time. So instead of doing the maneuver right now, this very second, we want to do the maneuver maybe 20 minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, we don't know. But let's go, uh, instead of course, we want to go to, say, Ultra, 
and probably you could probably do a little bit of super also but anything more than that's too much so alter is a good place to go and let's see when we can do this maneuver we're just putting in a bit of time and we can see as we're coming around here we now have information on the encounter view and we can see currently we're missing the moon by 37 thousand kilometers but we're not done yet let's go forward a little bit farther in time you can see that minimum altitudes coming down and there we are we're arriving at the moon at the line of nodes but we're missing the moon by about four thousand almost five thousand kilometers but uh, we can we can work on that a little bit uh, one thing is that we might have a little bit too much velocity here so let's go back to the prograde let's go down to a super setting at this point and let's see if we take away a little bit of velocity. Um, it's actually going up, but let me try something. Let me take away a little bit of velocity. And now let's go back to the date and let's see if we maybe back up the date. Nope, that's not helping. Let's go forward with the date a little bit. And that's helping. And we're, we're there. We're almost there at the moon. But you can see that our timing isn't quite right. We are, the, the line of nodes is here and we're, we're saying that we're going to arrive at the moon there. And that's actually okay. Uh, let's go back and see if we can fine tune this a little bit more. So we're, we're, we're gonna get to the moon. Let's just try to fine tune it though, that's, that's better. So we're gonna get to the moon, but you can see our timing is ever so slightly off. Um, and that's that's just one of the one of the things that's difficult with the the fact that the moon doesn't move around the earth at a constant velocity It's hard to calculate exactly when to take off, but you can see here. We're really close What you can do when you get to this point is you can say well Maybe if I left one orbit farther into the future. So instead of leaving in uh, 3,000 seconds, what if I stay in orbit and, and orbit the earth one time or two times or three times well we can see we can see what that would ha what would happen if we did that so let's go back to uh ultra and we're going to press plus plus and we're going to swing this all the way around and we'll notice we're going farther and farther into the future so one f one more orbit out into the future is just 90 minutes and what would happen if we waited another you know uh 90 minutes or so instead of leaving here and just uh a little bit do an adjustment to go down to hyper and we can play we can fine-tune everything to see if it's any better or not and it's actually not it's actually getting worse so what that tells me is that we would be better off if we actually had left a little bit sooner so we have two options there number one we can uh, we can ch you know I don't want to say cheat but we could use the scenario editor to back up time we could scrap the mission and start over from the ground or you can just accept the fact that uh, we our timing was a little bit off and we're just going to have to leave and, and our timing isn't going to be perfect and that's probably what you'll obviously want to do in most cases but as you're learning as you're just learning to do this it's no big deal in my opinion at all if you just want to set the uh, maneuver at the exact best time and then use the scenario editor to back up a little bit so if we go back one orbit, let's go back to the uh, prograde variable, and let's take out some of that velocity, and then go back to the maneuver date. And what we're doing is we're just adjusting date and we're adjusting prograde so that we can fine tune our trip out to the moon. Getting very close, you can see we're still missing it. And let's go back to the uh, prograde. And back to the date. And I may have actually been backwards on that. We may actually, we may need to leave farther into the future. Let me check that. That would actually be better. Um, so let's go forward one, two, three orbits. And let's see how our timing works out here. Let's check our prograde change the prograde and check the date again the time I should say
yeah, I'm going to say our timing, our timing isn't, isn't ideal, but again, if you run into this situation where you arrive in orbit and let's say you're really far off, let's say that, uh, let's say you're like all the way up here before you're finding your closest approach to earth or rather you're finding your closest approach to the moon. If that happens, then I would say definitely use the scenario editor to change the date around a little bit in order to make it match up so that when you're at this point, you're arriving at the moon. And if you're, if you're an absolute beginner, and obviously you are if you're watching these videos, then it's not, I wouldn't really think of it as a big deal. It's not really cheating or anything, because you're learning. You're just learning how to do this stuff. So, for, but for our, for our sake, we're going to go ahead and reset the uh, date, just to get everything back to zero. And we're going to just try to get it here on this uh, first orbit around. And if we can't catch it here, we'll catch it on the next orbit. Again, let me go back to the program one more time just to fine-tune that down because I changed it before. Uh, something else I'll mention, whenever you turn maneuver mode on, it gets into a state where it's kind of fixed, where the elements of the orbits are in a fixed state. So every now, if it takes you more than a minute or two to set up your maneuver, what you want to do is every time you go through your variables, when you see this base update, uh, click it. Just click update, and what that does is it updates transex so that it's more current so that all the orbital elements are right now this very second you'll notice every time you do that things will shift slightly on that side and that's just because the you know things are moving around in the sky okay so that's going to end it for this part of the video because we are over 30 minutes and when we come back we'll talk about we'll talk more about how to fine tune our arrival here at the line of nodes to make sure that our timing is good and if th if this was a little bit over your head, don't worry. Um, we're gonna cover we're gonna cover I'm gonna cover transex in a lot of detail in more videos. But you know we got to start somewhere. And again, I think the best way to learn how to use transex is by solving problems with it, and not by me sitting here saying this is the forward button and this is the backward button. That's the VW. And I just I think that's retarded. I don't think people learn that way. And when I see other people that do videos like that, I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. How can anybody ever learn? But uh, if you like this video, like it, don't like it, don't like it, uh, subscribe, all that stuff. See you in the next part.